Hey everybody, Tim Jordan here. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the three different types of private label products. Did you realize there were three? Listen to the end of the video. Hopefully this is helpful. Here we go. All right, so most of us have sold on Amazon for any period of time. Now there's different ways of selling. There's online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, wholesale, bundling, private label. But over the past few years, I figured out that the term private label is not specific enough. There are so many ways to sell your own brand on Amazon. In fact, technically bundling can be private label. That's a whole different topic. Won't get too deep into that right now. But as we were like talking to people and learning and figuring out this private label thing, I realized that sometimes I would talk about these great methods and realize well, this doesn't include another good method. Or we would see the way one person was doing private label, which was different than the way this person is doing private label. And when they're communicating and saying, this is how you do it. And they're saying, no, this is how you... I realized, man, there's got to be a better way to actually start defining these. Some time ago, I started defining in my head, kind of like segmenting and, and, and realizing these big differences. And there are a lot of different ways to sell on private label, but the majority of the time, we can combine them into three different types of private label. And that's what I want to explain right now. And guys, this is important. It is so important to understand the three types because some of them are good, some of them are bad. And we need to start identifying and realizing that these different methods mean that there are different uh, paths that we have to take, different types of products that we can use, different types of launch methods and social media management. We have to understand there are differences. So let's run through those. Number one, the Yeti product. I've talked a lot about the Yeti product in past content. If you're not familiar with the Yeti product is, check out this link right here that'll take you to the video and show you what the Yeti product is more in detail. In general, the Yeti product is a product that is being searched for and it doesn't have any options or very little options on Amazon itself, right? So it's a product that has very specific high relevancy search volume. People are specifically looking for this product, but they can't find it. An example of a Yeti product would be you know, years ago before the big trend of fidget spinners started. People were looking for fidget spinners, but nobody loaded them on Amazon yet. So there are people that were literally searching 15, 20, 30,000 times a month for fidget spinner, and there weren't any listings on Amazon yet. At that time, it was a it was a complete Yeti product. It was this mythical creature that people wanted and they couldn't find. This is called a fidget spinner. My daughter has one. You just kind of put it on your finger and spin it around like this. Obviously, we know it became saturated later, getting a whole nother topic, but that's what a Yeti product is. And honestly, there are probably tens of thousands of products that people are looking for every day with highly relevant search terms and keywords that they just can't find. It's just not available out there, or at least the types are just not very good. Now let's talk about the second type of private label product that is the most prominent. It is what I call the better mousetrap. The better mousetrap is a term for like an improved product, uh, differentiation, something that's better. Now I'm not talking about differentiating your product from all the other uh, saturated, overly competitive bull crap by putting a pink handle instead of a blue handle or putting a two pack instead of a one pack. No, I'm talking about true differentiation. A lot of times, a lot of times, this is going to be made up by different material. Okay, it can be different material, it can be a different size, a different application, things like that. The better mousetrap is typically a product that starts off with something saturated you don't wanna sell. If you watch the Project X case study that I did with Helium 10, an example of the better mousetrap would be the wooden egg tray holder. Remember, there was a lot of people on Amazon searching for egg trays and egg storage, and they were being offered the plastic, acrylic, polymers. But when we looked over at Pinterest and Etsy, we saw people wanted the wood ones. So we created a better mousetrap. We created a better version. And we used different ideas and different resources away from Amazon to determine what people wanted. I happen to have on my desk an example of that. This is a fairly typical Amazon product, our Amazon type product. It's a leather passport holder, okay? I've got I've got money in it from the last time I traveled, but um, it is a leather passport holder. Now, if you look up the search term passport holders, you're gonna see people looking for passport holders, okay? It's gonna happen. Uh, people are selling them, it's fairly saturated. It's a lot of low quality stuff. Like I wouldn't necessarily wanna sell a passport holder. People are also looking for leather passport holders. This is a very nice one made from some buddies of mine down at Haiti made in Haiti. Love it. But this is going to be a very competitive product, right? Because there are a lot of leather passport holders. But what about this? This is a passport holder made from a different material. It's actually cork. Okay, cork. What I realized about a year and a half ago is there's actually demand for vegan leather. 
alternatives. All right. Something that feels, touches, uh, looks kind of like leather, feels the same functions as leather, but it's not actually made from an animal. This is cork from the tree. So this may be an example of a better mousetrap because passport holders in general are saturated. It's too competitive. Leather passport holders are too saturated. It's too competitive. But maybe we can come up with a better mousetrap passport holder that's made of a vegan material because people want something that fulfills this function that's nice, that's a good quality, that's durable, but that's not made from animals. So the better mousetrap may be a cork passport holder or a vegan or a non-leather passport holder. Now I haven't done the keyword research. I don't know specifically if that's a winner, but that's my point is there are so many products out there where we can just create a better version, a different version, uh, a better mousetrap essentially. I actually think that the better mousetrap is probably the most prevalent type of private label product that people are succeeding with right now. Now you do have to compete for those highly competitive keywords. It's not as like amazing and magical and just awesome as a Yeti product, but there are more better mousetraps out there, better ways to differentiate, better ways to make a different product and sell on a fairly competitive demand niche with just something that's very, very, I won't say revolutionary, but very different compared to what everybody else is seeing on those pages. The third type of private label product, wait, pause. Before I go any further, make sure to hit the subscribe button below and please give us a thumbs up on this video to show us that you like this kind of content. All right, let's keep going. The third type of private label product is what I call a bright idea. A bright idea ding, is one of those items where you have a revelation, like all the stars align and you've got the best idea in the world. You know exactly what you need to sell, right? It's this thing that nobody knows exists, but they gotta have it. A lot of bright ideas are inventions, right? There's something that doesn't exist. Nobody knows it's out there. Nobody's looking for it. These may be the greatest things that slice bread, but if people don't know it exists and there's no highly relevant keywords to direct people to it, it's going to be very difficult to sell. I know some people with the greatest products and the coolest products and the best inventions, but they're just complete dumpster fires on Amazon because you can't sell them on a marketplace. A marketplace is for highly relevant search terms. One of the best ways to sell a bright idea product is through Facebook ads and make people aware of them through social media influencers, through things like Kickstarter and Indiegogo. But taking them straight to Amazon is pretty tough. I have some friends who have a product called Wet Sleeve. It's an amazing product. I can talk about it because it's patented. It is a water bottle that slips over your arm. You can see it right here. This product did not do well on Amazon. And the reason is nobody knew it existed. The most relevant keywords that we could find to help sell this thing were like water bottle for running, but it's not really water bottle for running. So my point is, you may have the greatest invention, the greatest idea, the best um, product invention out there, but it doesn't mean it's going to be good for Amazon. Is it technically a type of private label product? Sure it is. Doesn't mean it's going to work. So make sure that if you're looking at a new idea, a new invention, you want to determine if it's going to be good on Amazon, you're either going to pour a ton of outside traffic to make people aware of it. Go here, go here, go here. Let's educate. Let's do social media videos and influencer marketing, all this stuff. It can be done, but it's a heavy lift. It's pretty tough. Or make sure that there is demand for it, meaning highly relevant search volume looking for that product. Okay. So let's review. The Yeti product is my favorite. They're harder to find, but when you find them, whoa, it can be good. All right. People are looking for it, can't find it, easy to rank, exceptionally easy to convert and sell, and you can start dominating. Second type, better mousetrap. It might be a type of product or a, or a function of a product or a category that's fairly competitive and there's a lot of people selling it. However, you create a better version, you create a different variation that is not just slightly different, not just a different color, not just a little different size, but something that's truly different that you can sell on that keyword demand, something that not everybody else is offering. The third type is that bright idea. It's a product that may be the best thing in the world, but if people aren't looking for it, it's going to be so hard to sell it on Amazon. And unless you have tons of resources and money to get that thing going, I actually discourage you from launching bright idea type products as a beginner or with a low budget, especially. All right, guys, hope this is helpful. Remember, we talk about this and other great things every week, almost every day in the Private Label Legion Facebook group. Make sure to join it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel. Guys, we're dropping two or three videos every single day. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel, please. It is so important for us to uh, connect with our viewers and figure out what type of content that you want. And also check out privatelabellegion.com and we'll see you guys on the next video.